So we're just talking about a couple of the plant species we have here. There's a lot of salicornia, a lot of pickleweed, jaume, et cetera. We've just been talking about daughter, salt marsh daughter, Cuscuta salina, which is the, it's dying back now. It's that orangey kind of stuff you guys see in the, in the distance over there around the, the transition. And, it, and it, it's also, it's also these, these orange tenderly. It's a parasite on, on this Jaumea plant, but it, this Cuscuta salina is daughter. So, um, so anyway, that's, that's a parasite. You guys want, anybody else, anybody else not get a chance to see it? Uh, anyway, so, um, so, so, uh, so daughter, salt marsh daughter is a natural disturbance factor. It's going to attack these succulents and it's a natural source of disturbance. As we look here, the area that we didn't plant, the marsh plain behind me, relatively still naked. Yeah. We'll talk about that in a second, but relatively naked. Um, the, the salicornia where we have salicornia, the pickleweed is more or less contiguous pickleweed. There's some other stuff in there but it's mostly that, right? The biomass, the cover is mostly that sucker. More or less the same story right here along this Tidal Creek bank. As we start to come up higher, we get a little bit more diversity, but uh, left, to its own left to its own devices, pickleweed will tend to like crop everybody out, squeeze everybody out. So daughter is one of those factors that introduces natural disturbance. So it's gonna come in, Kaboom! Kill these dudes. Boom! There's a hole now. There's a there's a gap in the canopy. Now this is a place where other species can come in. So without that disturbance, so let me say it this way. So if we have a salt marsh or an ecosystem that's disturbed every single day, it's screwed, right? But at the same time, if we have an ecosystem that's never ever disturbed, that could be just as problematic, right? In most situations, there are examples of where that's not really the case, but almost everywhere that's the case. So we want some kind of ideal mix that's not purely never touched and not touched every day, but it's this kind of intermediary thing. And that's where we get the diversity. So for example, this guy right here, this guy right here, this is this looks super ugly at this time of year, this, this late fall or this mid fall. This is limonium. Um, or sea lavender. And sea lavender, whereas these other plants we're talking about, the salicornia, jaumea, all these wetland plants, they very much are asexually reproducing. They come in, they spread, which is why when we're planning for our restoration, we could just plant a few of them and we have good confidence the stems are going to go out, the runners are going to go out, and they're going to fill in this area, right? So we don't need to make it wall to wall salicornia, it'll come in. If we want limonium in here, we got to bring those in. Limonium, here's the stem with some seeds. So this stuff is not asexually spreading. This is a seed base. This is a sexually reproducing, well, all these plants sexually reproduce, but, but most of the, the cover here is coming from asexual spread. These guys only can get in if there's an opening in the canopy because the seed has to get to the ground. The seed has to have light. The seed has to be able to do its due, right? So having some form of natural disturbance is really, really key. We can get disturbance in a, in a few different ways. We can get disturbance from things like um, uh, uh, grazing. We can get disturbance from parasitical plants that create an opening. We can get disturbance from rack that washes in, right? Rack, rack that might blow down from the um, fresh water source or might float in like a kelp paddy or something like that, might land under a really, really high, high tide, float around, the tide goes out, oh, it's dropped and it might smother and kill those plants. It might cut them off from light. And so if it's there long enough, it could nuke the canopy and create an opening. All of that is natural. All of that can also be too excessive. We can have too much parasitism. We could have too much debris coming down the, the watershed, but, but, uh, but there historically has always been some amount of disturbance in these systems. And we want some amount of disturbance to promote that diversity and that, and that, that heterogeneity. So the last thing is we're, since we're stepping, stepping here before we move to the next site is, so that salt pan, salt pans are notoriously hard to colonize. As we can see here, the sun's beating down on them. We have this salt built up in the salt pan. And again, salt pans are healthy. We shouldn't, we shouldn't not have salt pans, but, but just, just if we have too much disturbance or, or the, it's too devegetated, it can take a long time for those plants to colonize. That's super salty now. 
I can tell just from looking at it. Super, super salty. So it's gonna be a lot harder for plants to get in. So what typically happens is I'm a plant on the edge. I shoot out a runner. I throw a runner into there, right? And so I'm sort of, I'm sort of using that space for photosynthesis and everything, but my, my roots and everything are over here in the more less salty soil, the, the less intense soil, cooler, not as hot. And so if I throw in these, these, these tendrils, these, this asexual spread into from the edges of the salt pans, that's usually how the salt pans get, get um, colonized, right? And so we have a disturbance, plant's gone, plant's gone. Now the sun's hitting it, now it becomes saltier, so it becomes a salt pan. Then it gets colonized from the inside. So more of this successional kind of wave that we talked about before, right? That succession story coming into play. So we can use that succession in our restoration designs. If we want to maintain that open area, we can make the salt pan larger in our restoration design. And say, hey, I want, to, I want this to be around for a decade or two or so, make it bigger. If we want it to be around just for a little bit, we can make it much smaller. And so that might also influence how we want to plant our, how we want to put our plants, that kind of stuff. Cool? Okay, good. So disturbance in the salt marsh, important thing. Cool. All right, let's keep walking, you guys.